Welcome to Cooking Fresh with Stephanie. I'm Stephanie Lett, and we're all about creating sensational meals from the abundant New Jersey harvest. I'm at the Homestead Farm Market in Lambertville, New Jersey with Ed and Debbie Clausen. The Clausen families lived here in Lambertville for over a hundred years and about 30 years ago they opened the Homestead Farm Market. It's become a hub for the community where people can buy locally produced food items as well as local produce. We really try to pride ourselves in working with local farmers, local vendors to bring all kinds of products, eggs, meat, cheese, and of course Jersey Fresh Produce to our community in Lambertville. So today I'm making a kale salad with apples. So looking for things that are local, fresh, and in season. I'm also making a homemade pasta with oven roasted cauliflower and leeks. And then for dessert, I'm gonna take some pears and poach them in wine over a maple spiced ricotta. Yum. Yeah. What do you got that you can help me with to get for our meal today? Well, the good news is, is that everything you've chosen is seasonal, is local, and you can get it all here. Starting with the ricotta, we carry uh, Fulper Farms, which is right down the road. So Debbie, I've got the Fulper family ricotta I'm gonna to use today. And um, tell me the difference between like getting a local fresh ricotta and getting one you might buy in a supermarket. Well, I think obviously the freshness of it, but I just have one word and that's the creaminess. It's, uh, it just melts in your mouth. There's nothing better. So it's a different, it's a different experience because it's so fresh. Absolutely. Okay. I need pears. I'm going to be wine poaching the pears. Now, you know, when you're poaching pears, they shouldn't be too soft. They should be a little bit firm so that they can absorb the wine. So which do you suggest that I get? Uh, I think the Bosque pears it would be best Bosque. for that. Okay. All right. I'm going for the Bosque. You know, all the pears and apples all come from local uh, sourced Mulek Farm in Oldwick. Um, great. great variety, great freshness. And I know you guys make a kale and apple salad, so I'm going to make my version today and I'll bring you some you can test. Okay. All right. So what apples should I use? I think you need to go with the Honeycrisp. Uh, just because it's so crisp, it's so sweet, it'll be perfect in a kale salad. I so love Honeycrisp. Okay, I'm getting Honeycrisp right now. I need two. Good. That'll be great. Tell me about the kale. Where do you get the kale from around here? Uh, the kale, actually, a lot of our produce right now is coming out of South Jersey because they have great growing conditions. And these fall vegetables like the cooler temps, especially at night. They're nice and crisp and fresh, and, and this is their season. This is gonna be amazing. Okay, I'm getting kale and I'm getting leeks, which are a mild form of onion and are really gonna be delicious in our pasta. And you can see they like growing, see how big they are? They are, those are amazingly beautiful leeks. We're a fourth generation winemaking company. Our winery is located down in Hamilton, New Jersey. We're the blueberry capital of the world. Mm -hmm. We're about 30 miles in from Atlantic City. Down on the estate, we farm, it's about 68 acres that, uh, that we farm and we definitely grow over 20 varietals of grapes. The soils are phenomenal. We have a sandy loamy soil, fantastic for growing wine grapes down there. For New Jersey standards, we're a really good sized winery. We produce close to 60,000 cases a year. We're in four countries and we are in somewhere around 23 of the continental United States. So Heidi, this is my menu today and I need your help. I'd like to pick a white and a red so that um, all of our guests can enjoy the kind of wine they like. So we have a kale salad with apples and it's got some cheese, uh, an aged cheese, so that's a little bit sharp. And it's got like a lemon dressing, so there's just sharp flavors there going on. Then I've got a homemade pasta. I'm gonna oven roast some cauliflower and leeks, and then bring the sauce together with some tomato, garlic, 
and then a Toma cheese from Cherry Grove, where we're gonna, that's gonna melt into kind of a creamy cheese sauce. Then we're gonna go finalize that with a poached pear with a maple spiced ricotta. That sounds amazing. So for the kale salad, I would recommend arcotzatelli. So this is the arcotzatelli. I think you're gonna love this. You're gonna find on this, they're gonna be soft notes of like baked pears. You get a little bit of those baking spices in there and there's a touch of apricot as well. Mm -hmm. Of our dry wines, it's probably the least dry. It feels a little creamy on the palate, but you still get a crisp, sharp mm. finish. That's really good. Really crisp, like you said, just dry enough. I, I wanna say clear, it's, it's clearing to the palate. This is gonna be good with all of the different flavors. Right. And <laughs> That's, that's a great choice. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, now good. for our red wine drinkers, what now would you suggest? All right, my choice for your red wine is a Pinot Noir. This is a 2015 vintage from the winery. It is 100% estate grown. It's more of a rustic Pinot. So you're going to get some tart cherry, some tart raspberry in there. Um, you're gonna get some wet leaves and forest floor, a little bit of oak. Our whole focus here is doing, you know, local seasonal produce right now. So right. This, is, this is gonna be great. Mm. That's really delightful. The flavors you described, I can taste them in there. I can taste, I can taste the berry. I can taste the leaves. You know that mm -hmm. that sort of yes. fall and and musty smell. It's really gentle. It's feminine. It's a light body red, but I really think it's going to enhance um, the flavors that's in the pasta. Oh, that's good. That's really good. You know what they mm -hmm. say, if it, if it grows, grows with it, it goes with it, so mm -hmm. we're going Jersey. I'd Go say that's, Jersey. I love I'd it. say that's great. So for our dessert, we're looking for a wine. I'm gonna take some New Jersey pears and I'm gonna poach them, because when you're using a red colored wine, you'll mm -hmm. get a nice ruby color right. on the fruit. Now, the poached pears are gonna go with a maple spiced ricotta. Sounds good, huh? That sounds delicious. Um, I have two that I'm recommending. We have a raspberry wine that would be absolutely delightful with it. I want you to taste both. Okay. Uh, but our port, I think, is probably gonna give you the depth that you're looking for. So, this is the raspberry wine, which is absolutely delicious. Mm. Oh. Right. Mm. <laughs> Our raspberry wine is made with 100% fruit, and it has that consistency of a whole milk. Mm. Um, it feels creamier on the palate. It is richer in that way. You know what I like about it is that because it's raspberry, there's some tartness. It's not a sweet, sweet wine. Right. All right. And this is our 2016 vintage port. You're gonna love this. Okay. It is fabulous. Look at that color. Yeah. Mm. Mm. We make this with our Chamberson and our Petit Verdot grapes, which everything is grown on the estate down in Hamilton. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's a yeah. delicious it glass is. of wine. It is, yeah. And they it's going to be really great with, with the, uh, I'm going to put in some cinnamon, I'm going to put in some cardamom, mm. and some cloves. And then we're going to poach the pears. That'll be perfect. Okay. We're going to be making now our homemade pasta with roasted cauliflower and leeks and toma cheese. Here's the head of cauliflower, here's the stem end, and so I'm gonna take my big knife and you have to cut kind of in a cone shape to cut out the core here. So I'm gonna cut like this, cutting through these tough leaves and the tough core here. And when you get all the way around, you'll see you'll be able to take out the core. So there that is, and that's pretty close to not edible. Because these are going to be in our pasta, you want them to be bite-sized. You don't want them to be big pieces like this because you don't want to be using a knife in the pasta. It should, everything should be able to be wound around the pasta and bite-sized. So cutting here, I'm just cutting off the florets until they're in bite-sized pieces. And if you want, you can take that little inner core that's not quite so tough, and slice that. That can go into your pasta too. The chef's mantra is total product use. We're gonna take these 
cauliflower pieces. I'm gonna put them on a sheet pan like this and brush them with olive oil, salt, and pepper into a 400 degree oven for 20 minutes. Flip them over about five or 10 more minutes on the other side. So this is a leek. Um, this is the root end, obviously. This is the stem end. And so in recipes, you'll see that it'll say things like use the white and light green portion. Up here, it gets darker green and it's too tough to use. So I'm gonna cut off just a little bit of the top here and the root section. Now I'm gonna cut it in half just to make it a little more easy to cut, but I'm gonna cut the long way. The reason for that is that the leek grows kind of concentrically. So it starts off like a blade of grass and then the farmer piles dirt on top of it and that keeps the photosynthesis from happening. Inside each of these layers very often is a lot of dirt. So you have to wash your leeks very well. So what I usually do is I cut them in half and have that flat side down and then I'm gonna cut them into about third inch half moons. And so you'll see that they'll come apart into their half rings. This I would take and bring it to a salad spinner, wash it well in a salad spinner, and then spin it out and dry it. And then into a bowl with olive oil, salt, and pepper, and then into that 400 oven. It'll be about 10 minutes, flip them, 10 more minutes. Another part of our pasta sauce is going to be tomato. So I'm using a plum tomato. It's a good tomato if you don't have any fresh ones from your garden, and it's a very sturdy tomato. And that's important in a pasta sauce like this where we want it to have an integrity to it. We don't want it to melt into a smooth sauce. We want it to have pieces of tomato. I've cut it on what I would call the equator. So here's the North Pole and the South Pole. That's the stem end, that's the flower end. This is the equator. I've cut it on the equator and inside you see the seed portions. So I'm gonna take my finger and pull out the seeds here. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it's gonna to add too much liquid to our pasta sauce. All of the liquid is in that seed portion. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna cut them. I'm gonna take out the core here. That's the stem end. I'm just gonna cut in a cone shape here to cut out the core. Now I'm just gonna cut into slices and then take those slices and cut them into strips. And then the strips across again into about quarter inch pieces. So that's what I have here. I've cut up some already. And the reason to do that is so that they're uniform in size. If they're uniform in size, they'll cook uniformly. So I'm gonna cut those and get them into my tomato bowl. So this is thyme. So the easiest way to de-stem the thyme is here's the stem end and here's the growing end. So you hold it kind of from the growing end and then pull backwards and that will pull the leaves off the stem. And they're so small and so pretty. I love them so much I never ever chop them up. A lot of recipes say mince your thyme. Come on, they're really small. So I keep them whole. So these are chives. They're a form of onion, a very mild form of onion and with the herbs that we're gonna be using, we're gonna be integrating a little bit of them into the pasta sauce, but a lot of them are gonna go on the top. And a lot of time with fresh herbs like this, you use them right at the end. If you cook them a long time, they kind of lose their fresh flavor and that's what you're going for in a fresh herb. And I'm just gonna cut my chives into about quarter inch pieces. Okay, now on to our pasta sauce. So I've got some butter melting here. I've sliced some garlic and I'm putting that into the butter. And then I've got our diced tomatoes. So I'm gonna put them in to the butter and garlic and I want that to begin to soften a bit. They're gonna extrude a little bit of water and we'll get uh, some good flavor to our base of the pasta sauce. Right here, I've got our oven roasted cauliflower and the oven roasted leeks that we prepared earlier. Now that my tomatoes are softened a little bit, I tasted one and it tasted soft, but because we used those plum tomatoes, they're still holding their shape. So I'm gonna put in our roasted vegetables and give that a toss and get them to reheat because they've been out of the oven for a while. So what's gonna happen next is I'm gonna put some salt into our boiling water and I'm putting in a pretty good amount. There's only two ingredients in fresh pasta, eggs and flour. Those are not very strong ingredients, so you need salted water to give it some taste. 
So here we have our beautiful freshly made pasta and I'm gonna put it in to the water and you see it collapses immediately. I'm stirring, I'm stirring it around so that it doesn't stick together. I'm just kind of fluffing it up in the water. And this is gonna take about two to three minutes. And just like dry pasta, fresh pasta also has an al dente core, which is that little white core um, that shows that it's not exactly cooked all the way through. So now our pasta's floating, and I can tell from the feel of it that it's done. So I'm gonna shut off the heat here and go straight from the pasta pot into our sauce pot. And that's gonna incorporate some of this starchy pasta water. So let's get that in, and I'm gonna start to toss it around with our vegetables. And as I do that, I'm gonna incorporate our cheese. Just gonna come all over the pasta, all around. And some of the pasta water is gonna come in and make the sauce with the cheese. As the cheese is heating, I've got it on medium heat so that it doesn't ball up the cheese. And you can see that creamy sauce being created here. I'm using some fresh lemon juice just to brighten up those vegetable flavors. And I've got some of my chives I'm gonna put over here and some of the thyme, saving some for the final plating. With all of the, good, the goodness on the top, some chives and some thyme. And that's our fresh pasta with roasted cauliflower and leeks and Toma cheese. Mmm. And they taste the, uh, the, the cauliflower and the leeks roasted mm -hmm. together. And it... Roasting brings out right the sweetness in the vegetable. The cauliflower gets kind of nutty, which is good. And then the tomatoes are bright and fresh. And the pasta melts in your mouth. Mm. We've got some wine that was selected for us at the Tomasello Tasting Room down in Lambertville. So we've got a red and a white. What would you prefer? I think I'll go for the white. Okay, John, you pour, please. Mm -hmm. And what are you gonna try, John? I'll try the red. Mm. I like the red because it, it kind of cuts through the richness of the cheese and the pasta sauce. It's not too overpowering. No, it's not. This what do you think of the white? The white is nice and crisp, and I think it also works really well with this dish. Mm -hmm. I think we should have a toast. Okay. To our fabulous chef, Stephanie. Stephanie. And to our hosts, John and Tracy Costanzo. Thank you for having us in your beautiful home, and thank you for letting me cook here. Oh, it's been fun. Great. It's been great fun. Thank you.